uh, understanding of um, problem in mathematical sense okay so uh, regarding any question any kind of thing you can put there in the google classroom i have already created a google classroom uh, you can put in detail if you are facing any problem and further we will interact uh, 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 there is a discussion forum through that also we can interact uh, regarding the problem so again good morning all uh, today it is all about uh, probability and here we will discuss about first lecture of the probability course and uh, here we will discuss about introduction to probability so uh, here we will start what is probability so probability generally uh, if you try to see uh, around yourself you will see probability everywhere uh, around us except motion of planet everywhere you will see probability okay so if probability is everywhere we need to understand what is the probability and uh, probability in uh, mathematical sense like uh, it must be a number so numeric sense we have to convert uh, we have to con quantify probability as a number so it uh, and uh, in the process of quantifying probability or converting into number we say that process or uh, measure of randomness or we call it quantification of randomness so in probability it is all about a study of randomness and if you talk about randomness it is everywhere where whenever you start with measuring anything with a numeric quantity then by default randomness will come there and uh, if you simply talk about uh, if you are taking a scale like suppose 100 meter a scale uh, like this way uh, uh, you can convert into uh, into uh, it is 100 uh, centimeter a scale uh, 0 to 10 centimeter then 10 to 20 and something like that and the last uh, here two decim uh, this you can call it uh, uh, 80 90 and 100 this one is 100 okay and i am asking to measure a length there is a there is a uh, length body call it uh, this is the length body you can call it it is a small rope or something like that and length is coming like here uh, this scale uh, you uh, say that uh, a scale measure the length of this object and length measurement is coming like here uh, simply here we can say that it is around 95.6 uh, five something like that you can say that so if you talk about uh, this measure so this measure is not a deterministic measure it this measure is not deterministic there is a randomness in, in this measure so if i ask uh, what is the source of randomness in this measurement which uh, decimal place is giving randomness in this measurement so 95 is very much deterministic there is no any issue so easily you can with this scale you can uh, see that up to this point you say that 90 and if you go further 5 minutes then you arrive here at 95 so 95 is uh, very much uh, deterministic visible through this uh, scale but again I, if I say 0 0.6 where is 0 0.6 so here uh, uh, 0 0.6 and uh, if you talk about uh, so definitely here it would be 5 or before 5 there would be 4 that we will call it 94 and 95 and uh, 96 will come so the 95.6 will come between 95 and 96 uh, so uh, 0.6 is not visible to us directly it is not vis visible to us if someone is asking about what is uh, about uh, 0.65 even then 5 this uh, second decimal place is also not visible so approximately we are saying that it may be around uh, 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 what uh, we can say that it is around 0 0.6 simply so we can approximate this number uh, by 95.6 we can approximate that 6 
तो सिक्स इज वट इट इज एक्चुअली नॉट अ डिटर्मेस्टिक सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव इज नॉट डिटर्मेस्टिक दिस वन इज रैंडम वन सो वी हैव एक्सपेक्टेड वी हैव टेकन एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ दैट क्वान्टिटी बाई सिक्स सो दिस वे वी से दैट इट इज एन एक्सपेक्टेड सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर If you talk about from the significant figure, so nine and five would be deterministic significant figure. There is no question about uh, measuring this quantity. Okay, and if you talk about six, six we got it through expectation, so expected. So now we that's why here uh, we have just uh, uh, measure the randomness here. So in the measurement we observe randomness here, and we try to approximate by this number. So that's why we call it. Uh, Uh, expected significance here point six is expected significant figure uh, we can call it so simply it is one source of randomness in the measurement when you do measurement with a scale so here the source of randomness is the limitation of uh, a scale we can call it now if you talk about physics uh, physics uh, everyone might be aware of temperature pressure uh, kind of physical quantity and if you go at the microscopic level that means at the molecular level then it the at the molecular level you know that uh, the temperature pressures uh, pressure those are arises due to random motion of atoms and molecules okay so uh, random when you say that random by default probability is coming there so at the microscopic level temperature pressure uh, it is very much related with random motion of atoms and molecules uh, here you can't predict the uh, movement of uh, uh, an atom or molecule uh, molecules at the microscopic level so that's where those uh, uh, by default randomness is coming there simply i would like to say that say that if you again come in biology or in medicine then if you talk about uh, evolution uh, or human evolution uh, uh, based on mutation so uh, now uh, we can't uh, Uh, completely reveal the uh, birth of a child how child is uh, uh, okay evolving and something like that so it is all based on random in very what it is not like deterministic thing random thing no one can directly say that uh, this is the law that is the law something like that so it is very much random in nature and uh, if you talk about uh, uh, various other a spread of disease like uh, recently around 2020 pandemic disease was there uh, pandemic time was there so so that uh, we call it uh, corona virus something like that so it so here if you talk about uh, the spread of those pandemic disease or disease something like that so again it uh, uh, those are following some kind of randomness again it is not like deterministic kind of thing so randomness and if you talk about uh, uh, various other disease in population and that very uh, there are various other epidemic models uh, are coming and those are involving random some sort of randomness if you talk about uh, cancer it is another kind of disease there in body and uh, uh, cancer is all about uh, uncontrolled growth of tissues and cells and there also we can't uh, determine the uh, proper way how uh, the cancer is propagating something like that so we have to Uh, understand those randomness because uh, a lot of randomness you will observe there and probability is giving a tool in order to understand all these if you come in electrical engineering and electronics kind of things then there is a transformation of uh, information and uh, when you trans someone is transforming information or tran from one place to another place so it is not wise to uh, translate or transform uh, or transmit uh, pure information you have to make it noise uh, from the uh, what we call it uh, uh, sender and the receiver will uh, uh, get uh, the noisy information and the receiver uh, once uh, the receiver will get a noisy information and from there that receiver will try to denoise in order to get back the information what was sent from the uh, transmitter okay so that kind of thing so again so noise is coming in electrical engineering and also in electronics and communication kind of things so if you talk about uh, uh, computer science so everyone might be aware of algorithm so if you just work with deterministic algorithm definitely it will solve simple problem or deterministic problem but what will happen that uh, uh, sometime uh, if uh, the problem happens to be very complicated 
that deterministic al algorithm is not working. So you have to randomize the algorithm. So randomized algorithm is uh, coming into picture. Like one Google search engine randomized al algorithm is very much famous uh, there. And actually it is all about solving hard problems by randomizing the algorithm. And also in optimization, you will see that a stochastic optimization will come there. The a stochastic gradient descent will come there. So that means one kind of uh, randomness, if you put it here in some sort of uh, uh, random notion, randomness notion, then you will uh, see uh, a better solution, better solution of that. Okay, that problem or better situation of that. And if you talk about further in uh, statistics and machine learning, actually both are dealing with in a similar way. But approach is that uh, statistics uh, more about data. It is a starting with data and machine learning is just focusing much about algorithm. It is focusing much about algorithm. So that is the difference if you talk about the statistics all about it uh, start with data and uh, machine learning is all about that uh, is uh, start with algorithm. Okay, so again, uh, most of model there happens to be random model. So that means a model with some kind of noise or some kind of randomness there. Now, the data, what I told, the data is collection of various uh, uh, measurements. Uh, measurement in the first, I had told that uh, it contains uh, some kind of uh, noise or some kind of randomness due to limitation of the uh, scale. Okay, so that's where the data, what data you will collect in row form uh, that happens to be random in nature. Okay, so we need to understand all those. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> what is happening that if you are trying to uh, see the difference between uh, the random experiment and deterministic experiment uh, so suppose uh, take an example suppose you throw a ball many times exactly with the same angle and with the same uh, speed under the same condition or scenario then every time when you uh, you run this experiment the ball will land in exactly the same place where you can predict exactly so what is going to happen so this one is one example of deterministic system so here if you are uh, really willing to predict correctly where the ball will land so you have to be very careful in order to uh, carefully watch uh, every rotation every movement everything every nest is coming there so you have to be very ultra attentive so it is very difficult for a simple common person it is very difficult to uh, count all the uh, movement and everything so under this uh, scenario you have to consider everything so it is very difficult even you if you are taking simply a coin and tossing and you can't say that uh, uh, whether head will come or tail will come uh, with certainty you can't say that because in order to do that you have to observe closely how that uh, coin is moving when you uh, uh, tossed then how coin is moving and how much time it is taking how it is reaching at the surface so you have to be ultra level uh, attentive so that one is simply uh, if you so see in practical scenario that one is not possible uh, if you are trying to make that uh, tossing a coin a deterministic system you have to be uh, what uh, ultra focus so that one is not possible simply simply so uh, that means uh, 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 that coin tossing and throwing a ball happens to be uh, random experiment random kind of things so a random phenomena is one that can yield different outcome in repeated experiment that means if you repeat once you will get head if you uh, toss a coin another time you will get tail or head or something like that it will keep on uh, just uh, uh, getting various kind of uh, output okay but with certainty you can't say that only head will come or only tail will come so uh, simply outcome would be random in nature I would like to say that with each trial outcome would be random in nature okay uh, same thing what I uh, discussed here uh, flipping coin is coming here so here what would be our challenge to develop a framework to reason pre precisely a random phenomena we have to come up with a mathematical framework in order to quantify the randomness that is all about probability so there are various approaches to quantify probability so the one of the important approach is Kolmogorov approach that we will discuss so if you go for uh, simply if I ask what is the definition of probability then uh, actually uh, the 
based on your experience you can come up with definition of probability that you will say that probability you will come up with sample of space then you will come up with the event and uh, in the uh, layman way or empirical way you can say that uh, it is one kind of uh, fraction uh, fraction that means defining number of outcome which comes in the event uh, a divided by number of uh, uh, outcome all possible outcome number of outcome uh in the event a okay divide by uh, all possible outcome or that means that we call it sample space collection of all possible outcome that we call, call it sample number outcome in the uh, sample space uh, we generally denote it by omega so uh, in a short way but this definition is not always uh, true uh, you will face problem uh, in order to define uh, a random experiment where there are infinite number of uh, outcome and uh, some other scenario uh, there was a continuum number of our outcome then uh, you will face problem in order to define the probability of the event in this framework so it is not always work, work it is true only in a very special case okay so that's why we say that uh, pitfall of various approaches to probability okay simply i would like to say that when you are defining number uh, that uh, probability of an event as a uh, this ratio uh, that number of outcome of uh, that occurs in e divided by number of all possible outcome it is not always true okay so we should not go for behind this definition this one is not a definition of probability simply uh, i would like to say so here various scenario is coming there so if you, this uh, the first uh, scenario it is you are tossing uh, two coin together okay and there uh, you are talking about an event where one head and tail occurs the ht you talk about ht one head and tail okay this kind of event an event containing this kind of outcome so if you are willing to compute probability based on uh, the kolmogorov approach the probability would be 1 by 2 because uh, there are uh, two uh, outcome which are having head and tail one is ht another one is th okay ht means first uh, uh, in the first toss we are getting head and and second toss we are getting tail and th means in first toss we are getting head and second toss we are getting tail so this is the uh, event the out uh, these are the outcome which is in the event okay and uh, how many possible outcomes are there when you are flipping two coins uh, there would be four possibilities so that's your two by four that means uh, simp in simplified form one by two so it is based on this formula okay it looks like but here finiteness is there but another approach is that the, if you uh, go for d lambert approach then probability of that event it would be uh, 1 by 3 it is saying that uh, outcomes are of it is not considering order like hh uh, ht and tt this kind of scenario is coming in uh, d lambert approach and in that case uh, probability of getting head and tail it would be just 1 by 3 so that one is uh, another approach so, so based on people's app, uh, uh, what they have taken con uh, conception you will get different different uh, probability that one is uh, not a good approach so in, in order to compute probability you have to be uh, uh, very alert and uh, focused that means you have to think uh, more than common sense what uh, common sense exists there and uh, uh, the basic principle uh, a probability are little bit more uh, than common sense properly formulated in mathematical language and uh, uh, actually this one is actually given by Kolmogorov and how it is defined so once we are comfortable with basic framework of probability theory we will uh, start developing uh, increasingly sophisticated method of uh, random phenomena okay so the notion of time is uh, uh, intimately related with randomness one can argue that that we, when you talk about uh, evolution so there by default uh, it uh, evolves with respect to time but uh, uh, <coughs> what simply i would like to say that when you talk about uh, 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 if you understand 
the previous scenario in the right way then you can talk about uh, perfect prediction about next scenario next in the evolution process okay so all these things will come there if you go for uh, evolution process then the, that evolution process uh, generally uh, modeled by uh, random process uh, and basic examples happen to be poisson process brownian process uh, motion of and uh, marco chain and various other kind of uh, uh, okay uh, random process so here goal of this course would be uh, uh, it is all about uh, we have to uh, precisely reason out about the randomness and most importantly we have to think in a probabilistic manner so probabilistically we have to think whatever uh, you have already studied in different uh, mathematical courses in plus 2 and high school so you have to change the scenario here like that way okay so we haven't defined probability uh, till now you can say that uh, that in the term of ratio the number of element in event divided by number of all possible outcome that we call it frequentist approach so we haven't defined till now so we will later be able to prove using our theory that when we repeat an experiment many times uh, an event of probability and then p this we call it probability of success later will occur in the fraction of experiment and we have to keep on increasing that uh, number of experiment and and that will then we will say that uh, the fraction will approach to probability of success p uh, that uh, that fraction probability we will call it uh, that empirical probability and uh, if you talk about uh, all these process all these falls in the uh, uh, large sample theory or law of large number kind of things we can call it okay now uh, those were just uh, uh, talking i was talking about what is probability and how probability is coming everywhere around us now i am uh, going to discuss here about uh, probabilistic modeling of an, a random experiment so here actual probability lecture start here uh, if you are having a random experiment we have to come up with a systematic model and this uh, modeling approach came from kolmogoro so kolmogoro approach seems so i k a we call it and here we have to come up with three basic principle of uh, probabilistic modeling the uh, the first one would be sample space the second word uh, second one would be event and third one would be probability measure so all about it is dealing with random experiment so uh, if you are having a random exper experiment then there we are defining uh, <coughs> those three basic concept so uh, what is the meaning of random experiment so a random experiment it is an experiment whose outcome cannot be predicted before the experiment is performed okay like if you are tossing a coin you can't say that whether head will come or tail will come once uh, the uh, coin will la land on the surface after seeing that we, you can say it is head or it is tail but uh, before uh, landing you can't say that whether head will come or tail will come okay with probability one so if such kind of experiment we are calling it a random experiment uh, experiment where the outcome is not predictable before the uh, experiment is already performed okay so uh, now we do however no in advance what are the possible outcome in the experiment that means if you are tossing a coin there are only two possible outcome either head will come or tail will come so in probability modeling only those experiment as uh, are meaningful when you know all possible outcomes if you don't know all possible outcome then it would be meaningless to uh, study in prob probability you should know uh, all possible what are the all possible outcome that scenario also you should know then it would be meaningful in the probabilistic modeling okay so here same example if you flip a coin uh, you know it will come either head or tail you just do not know which of these outcome will actually occur in a given experiment that you don't know okay so that's why tossing a coin is a random experiment the first ingredient or first basic principle of an probability modeling is the sample space that call it a specification of all possible outcome of a random experiment so what is the process of uh, uh, constructing or computing sample space it is a two step in the step one first we have to ident identify an arbitrary outcome from the experiment that an outcome once we have already identified an outcome 
then uh, list out all possible outcome and the list uh, the list of all possible outcome it will give to you sample space that we denote it by capital omega so capital omega it is the uh, collection of a small omega so where a small omega is an outcome in a trial of a, a random experiment okay so this is the first uh, ingredient or first basic principle of uh, probabilistic modeling of a random experiment the simple example if you flip a coin you know that uh, it will come up either head or tail uh, so if if you list all all possible outcomes there are just two outcome either it would be head or tail so that's way your sample space in tossing a coin is just it is a set with two elements head or tail so this is the sample space when you flip a coin now uh, if you take more uh, uh, complicated example a uh, little bit more it is even not uh, also simple simple kind of example uh, two dice game so if you are taking a dice so there would be six faces so you can give number to those uh, faces 1 2 3 4 5 up to uh, 6 okay so consider the random experiment of throwing one red die and one blue die so we denote uh, a, a general or arbitrary outcome by i comma j i is talking about number appears on the first dice and j is talking about number appears in the second dice that blue one so you have already specified in this a step one in a step one we have already done a specification of uh, an arbitrary outcome now afterward list out all possible outcomes so how many outcomes would be there so here you can say that i is taking value uh, from one uh, two and three four five six okay and j likewise j will take value uh, here oh. <coughs> you can call it uh, here itself a uh, one two three uh, four five six so in total there would be 36 uh, joint point if you are tossing uh, rolling two dice together okay and it is a collection of 36 uh, order pair i varies from 1 to 6 and j is also varying from 1 to 6 and uh, so the sample space is containing 36 outcome in the case of uh, throwing uh, two dice together okay and here an outcome is an order pair it is having uh, order pair the i is talking about outcome in the first dice j is talking about outcome in the second dice okay so that's why the joint outcome you can say that here and now if you talk about to waiting time like uh, if you are uh, waiting for a bus uh, uh, at a bus stop then uh, the waiting time in order to get a bus that will be again a random quantity okay and uh, waiting time is again a random experiment you can call it like that so it is uh, uh, if you talk about uh, what is the sample of space so simply say that uh, if you arrive at a bus stop and within 10 minutes you got a bus so t equal to 10 was the waiting time for that so it, that one is uh, one uh, what we call it one outcome you can simply say that likewise uh, t uh, you can get time instantly when you arrive at the bus stop so that time you haven't waited anything that means t equal to zero waiting time is zero or you have to wait one minute two minute three minute like that okay so here simply if i ask what is the sample space of waiting time for a bus at a bus stop it would be t greater than equal to zero omega would be t and t is greater than equal to zero t is the waiting time so you can say that it is a semi closed interval 0 to infinity uh, it may also possible that you won't get bus uh, uh, throughout day or something like that okay so it may also that scenario that might definitely might be a very rare uh, kind of scenario but that may also possible so that's way the sample of space for waiting time uh, it would be 0 to infinity there would be no negative time okay now if you <coughs> 
talk about uh, uh, that uh, that one was example of uh, continuous uh, uh, sample of space okay now another example you can take it like that a bee is buzzing around you and you, uh, you are willing to track the flight or journey of the bee for uh, next 5 minute so what would be the sample of space here so uh, in order to uh, list out the sample of space we have to first come up with a one outcome what would be the among the various what would be one outcome so here uh, uh, if you talk about b uh, one b it will uh, it is moving around you so actually around you it is a 3d kind of things so you are getting a uh, path path of the b this is the trajectory or path of the b in 3d so what is it? path is always a continuous function and from where to where uh, you are just observing from 5 second okay so here time domain is the domain of the path okay you are just observing for five second okay and you can say that uh, omega uh, one outcome it is a continuous function so path the trajectory or path of it b it would be not like that uh, b will move in a discontinuous way or jump kind of thing so uh, the b will move in a continuous fashion so it is a continuous path uh, function from uh, the close interval 0 to 5 to uh, R3 because B is moving in uh, a space. So that's why it is a continuous function from uh, interval 0, 5 to R3. So it is just one outcome. And what are the all possible outcome? All possible outcome, it is a collection of all continuous function which is defined from the close interval 0, 5 to R3. So this is the sample of space for the experiment when you are observing B for 5 minutes. So this is the uh, sample of space. So it is uh, collection of functions. We call it collection of functions. Okay, here sample of space we are going getting. Okay, now we will talk about the second basic concept of a random uh, probability modeling of a random experiment. That one is the event. Okay, event of interest also you can call it. So once you have already idea of sample of space, so we try to be more specific by introducing an yeah, a, a statement okay so if you talk about uh, a statement a statement is what uh, it is one kind of uh, uh, sentence which is having uh, either true or false value it is not like that ambiguity would be there in the statement so there are two possibilities for uh, a statement either that would be a true statement or false statement it is not like that it would be ambiguous kind of thing okay two so that is so event is what event will define as a subset of sample of space which is satisfying a statement it is not just only subset of say, sample of space it also have to satisfy a statement okay so once we have defined all possible outcome of a random ex experiment we should discuss what type of question we can ask by using a, uh, a statement uh, uh, okay, uh, whether uh, we have listed out all possible outcomes, so whether uh, this given set of outcomes are satisfying the given statement or not. So that kind of, it is one kind of a spe a specification simply we say that. So this uh, lead, uh, leads us to the notion of event. So informally we can say that event is a statement uh, for event is defined by a statement for which we can determine whether it is true or false after the experiment has already performed so uh, we can predict in advance whether this event will occur or not so occurrence is, uh, definitely probability would be not equal to generally one so it would be between zero and one but we can determine whether it is occurred once the outcome of the experiment is known to us okay so <coughs> consider here so simply we say that uh, if you take example two dice uh, a kind of random experiment so consider the tossing uh, or rolling of uh, uh, two dice one is red another one is blue one and i am here is an arbitrary outcome we denoted by order pair i comma j and if uh, uh, <coughs> we uh, come up with an a, a event by defining the statement that the sum of the number on the die is seven that means i plus j is seven so what are the outcome which is satisfying that uh, statement so if you take one one 
so one one is not satisfying one plus one is two two is not seven so one one is in the outcome one one is not satisfying this statement so one one will not come in this event e you call it event e if you take one two that will also not satisfy this statement okay so that will also not come here then if you take one six one six means one plus six is seven so this outcome is satisfying the statement so it will fall in the event when uh, event which is defined by this statement okay if you take 2 7 that one is also satisfying this statement so 2 7 5 will also come here in the event e okay if you take 3 4 then sum is 7 so that means 3 4 the outcome 3 3 comma 4 it is satisfying the uh, statement so 3 4 will also come here 4 3 will also come here 5 2 will also come here 6 1 will also come here so this is the desired event so this event is constructed or defined or generated by the statement this statement what is that statement the sum of the number on the dice is 7 so this is the statement so this statement will have either true value or false value with respect to the outcome of the uh, uh, throwing when you two dice okay so so either true or false kind of value it is having if it is true then it will the corresponding outcome will false in the uh, event if it is false then corresponding outcome outcome will not come in the uh, event okay so you can say that literally it is a, a subset of the sample space but it is not just only subset uh, it is actually this subset is constructed by a, a statement so this this is the statement okay and this is the sample space okay now another example we will talk about waiting time okay uh, Okay, consider the random experiment of waiting for a bus at a bus stop. Okay, at a random time in the future. Okay, so here if I am asking to define uh, sample space, easily you can come up with the, the sample space for waiting time uh, for a bus. It would be uh, interval zero to infinity. But I am uh, trying to uh, come up with a statement that the bus comes within first hour, for first hour. So this is the what we call it this is the statement given a statement in order to construct a suitable event okay so what is the event corresponding so the time waiting time when it is between 0 to 1 hour that will fall in the uh, event and if you are talking about waiting time is beyond 1 hour that will not come in the event okay that one is not satisfying this statement so that would come in e complement <coughs> <coughs> Till now, anyone is having any question, any kind of thing? Sri Rang, anyone is having any question? Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Hello, sir. Haan, any question? Anyone is having? Sir, uh, some students were asking, but. Uh, they can't ask right now. Okay, that limitation is there. Okay, ask them to put their question there in the Google Classroom. <coughs> yeah. Next, uh, next week I will be there. I will in the campus, so uh, there would be no issue. Okay, that time also I will answer all the questions. Uh -huh, yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. So here, uh, this is the uh, event defined by the statement and this is the corresponding sample space <coughs> this is the sample space you can see now once we have already uh, uh, computed <coughs> two things two basic concept first one is sample space <coughs> sample space that means it is list of uh, all possible outcome all is coming here till now we have seen that and we denote it by omega it is talking about all all possible outcome and when you are going to apply probabilistic modeling you need to know all possible outcome all possible outcome in a random experiment <coughs> Okay, all possible outcome you can call it. 
a second <coughs> basic concept we had already seen that event so event you can denote, denote it by capital a or capital e uh, depends upon your choice so generally i am taking a so it is not talking about all possible outcome it is talking about some possible outcome some possible outcome apart from that uh, it is talking satisfying a statement some possible outcome and some possible outcome in a random experiment and <coughs> there is a statement satisfying and satisfying a statement <coughs> satisfying and a statement the last line is very important the first one is also important <coughs> last one is more important that is the way to construct an event okay without a statement a statement you can't construct an event so suitably you have to identify a statement in a given problem there must be an a statement okay there must be an a statement so all about uh, these two concept uh, we have already discussed sample space and event now next uh, one is numeric one that we call it probability measure generally we uh, it is denoted by capital p uh, so actually if you talk about uh, capital p it is a mapping from uh, event kind of thing so all possible event so if you are taking a sample space then what would be event event uh, uh, it is a uh, collection of outcome collection of some uh, some possible outcome we satisfy an, a statement and then we define probability measure over those collection of outcomes and that uh, we call it probability measure okay so uh, so i will talk about the next segment any question till now further uh, if you want to take uh, from your side yes then uh, to a study randomness that a study in mathematics it will be translated into measurement or quantification so a study of a study of randomness will translate a study of randomness uh, you talk about further uh, translation of this one in mathematics term you will call it uh, measurement a study of randomness uh, it will be what major of randomness or another word is there quantification you can call it major or you can call it quantification that means you come up with a numeric things a number thing quantification quantification of randomness okay so when we talk about this quantity uh, that measure or quantification of randomness so how you will do that how you will do that so that we do it through 
Kolmogorov approach. The approach is Kolmogorov approach. Kolmogorov. He was a famous uh, mathematician. Kolmogorov. You can call him father of modern probability. Kolmogorov's approach. Okay, so uh, approach. And what is that approach? Uh, it is saying that uh, in order to come up with the probability modeling, uh, first talk about uh, the first basic concept talk about uh, uh, sample of space you denoted by omega the second basic concept is uh, event you uh, that means uh, you call it event e or a whatever it is some collect collection of outcome and it is satisfying some given a statement some given a statement like that there there must be a statement so a statement is uh, i have told that it is talking about all possible outcome uh, it is talking about some possible outcome some possible outcome that is the thing okay so uh, i think uh, for uh, everyone these two concept might be clear to uh, everyone now what you have to do once you are having idea of uh, sample of space and event you have to come up with the probability measure of event so uh, still we are not defining an explicit formula of this probability measure this we call it probability measure of an event i am not defining it so here what about event event there would be various event and it definitely first criteria is it is a subset of uh, uh, sample of space the second criteria is what uh, it is satisfying in a statement so what kind of uh, subset of sample of space uh, uh, we are talking about so the collection of those sub subset we will call it uh, uh, sigma algebra a uh, sigma algebra is a little bit complicated word in mathematics so simply say that uh, uh, it is a subset of sample of space which is satisfying a statement and in these two together you can call it a sigma algebra sigma is uh, like this way sigma algebra of sample of space omega we call it sample of space omega sigma algebra of sample sample of space omega okay so if capital p remember that here p is not a small p is capital letter here and the, the capital P it is a what is the argument of capital P it is an event so you can say that the capital P it is a map from sigma algebra uh, to what is the maximum probability anyone maximum probability that means you are reaching towards certainty is one and minimum probability is zero so the probability measure it is a map from uh, it is a function from sigma algebra to close interval zero one okay so this kind of map uh, uh, we'll talk about and this map is having three important property first one is uh, the probability measure of uh, empty set that means uh, uh, there is a very a strong statement which is not satisfying by any outcome so correspondingly what we will get we will get a null set so that means null set is what uh, it is a, a statement uh, the, uh, there is a statement which is not satisfied by any outcome of the experiment so that's why we are not getting any even outcome there in that uh, set okay or event so the, that means impossible kind of event simply we say that uh, so uh, that means uh, impossible to say that uh, 
there is a person who is uh, uh, living since uh, 2000 year back something like that impossible kind of thing so what that one is impossible so what is the probability of impossible thing it is zero so uh, pro what is probability of uh, a statement which is satisfying the st uh, statement that uh, a person of age uh, 2000 something like that even even more than 500 also that would be an impossible kind of event so probability would be zero and now if i say that uh, another kind of things uh, like uh, uh, a person will win when he will toss and get either head or tail. So, what is that? Either head or tail means he, uh, that person is talking about all possible outcome. So, that means it is uh, that person is talking about sample of space. What is the probability of sample of space? It is a certainty uh, kind of thing. So, probability of sample of space is uh, that means uh, probability measure of sample of space is, it is equal to 1. So, this one uh, the capital P satisfying this uh, uh, probability of phi equal to 0, probability of uh, uh, omega is equal to 1 this one is the first law the second law of probability measure is that uh, if you talk about uh, any proper uh, event a or you call it e then probability of proper event that means what is meaning of proper event uh, the e uh, it can't be phi or it can't be sigma uh, omega Okay, that is meaning of proper. That means uh, E can't be an impossible event or E can't be all possible event. Okay, containing all possible outcome. So, in that case, what is the value of probability measure for uh, this E? It would be between 0 and 1. Uh, strictly, it is between 0 and 1. So, there is a probability, it is like you can say that 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, something like that. Then, there is a third law that probability measure is satisfying that uh, we call it some ability law uh, actually if you take two event uh, e1 and e2 and there is no uh, overlapping between these two uh, event there is no overlapping okay so what is the probability of uh, union of e1 and e2 it is just sum of probability of E1 and probability of E2 that we call it some ability law and you can generalize it to countable number of uh, event. So, it is probability of A, E1 union E2 it is equal to probability of E1 plus probability of remember that these are the law or the axioms you don't need to prove it by default a probability measure is satisfying okay probability of e1 plus probability of e2 so probability measure measure you can call it probability simply probability of the corresponding event right now we haven't given any formula again i am recalling you so it is like that here what is condition provided the, there is no common outcome between e1 and e2 that means e1 intersection E2 is a null set. So, probability is major is satisfying these three property. Remember that just you have to recall these three property whenever you there is a probability major. Okay. And I will take a very simple example to compute uh, probability major of an experiment. Okay. So, here, uh, here. Uh, here uh, I was talking about probability measure of an ex one example like uh, uh, to throwing a dice. Throw a dice. Okay. Throw a dice. So if you throw a dice, then what would be the sample of space first you compute the sample of space it is having six possible outcome one two three four five six now if you uh, talk about probability major so, you are next task is that uh, you are willing to compute probability major <coughs> as a 
map from uh, sigma algebra of this uh, sample space omega to upper interval 0 1 ok now close interval 0 1 here so how you will come up with all those three axioms uh, you will take benefit of three axioms first you need to talk about if you talk about 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 6 and you are willing to compute the probability measure here you have to come up with some kind of probability law so if you talk about uh, throwing a dice so we are not giving a specific choice of the uh, what occurrence of faces uh, that means we never say that one is having better chance of occurrence than two and two is having better chance of, of occurrence than three like that so here all the faces are having equal chance of occurrence so that law uh, that means uh, equally likely so we are if you are willing to compute probability measure you have to in order to compute probability measure you have to come up with a probability law to compute probability measure you have to come up with a probability law to compute probability measure capital p come up with a probability law from the red random experiment or within the random experiment come up with a come up with a probability law remember that probability measure is <coughs> third basic concept and till now i haven't discussed about law so the law here probability law it is coming in order, in order to compute a numeric value of the probability measure so here uh, based on the experiment we can say that probability of uh, uh, 1 is equal to probability of 2 that means each phase is having equal chance of occurrence ok so that we call it uniform law or equally likely law equally likely law so that we can say it here but we don't know what is the value of probability of 1 and probability of 2 or probability of 3 we don't know that right now ok simply we say that all the faces are, are having equal chance of occurrence so that's why we say that probability of 1 equal to probability of 2 equal to probability of 3 equal to probability of 4 equal to probability of 6 equal to probability of 5 ok so that we say that so this one is you call it 1 ok this is coming with respect to uniform law of occurrence of these faces the second you will see that you know that uh, probability of sample space omega it is equal to 1 and the sample space is containing uh, this outcome 6 outcome 1 2 3 so that means uh, you can say that omega is what it is union of uh, all these 6 uh, faces you can write it like that uh, omega is union of 1, 2, 3, ok likewise you will go up to 6, union of 6, ok and what about the, uh, the event this and this, these two are mutually disjoint if you talk about uh, these two occurrence of 1 and 2 together it is not possible in a single throw of a dice so these two are uh, actually mutually disjoint simply you can say that ok so if I am asking to compute probability of uh, sample space uh, yeah we know that the value is 1 but if probability of sample space in term of these out outcomes would be what uh, as per third law of the uh, law of the probability measure that summability law it is sum of the probability of this one that means probability of sample space is omega is equal to probability of 1 plus probability of 2 plus probability of 3 and likewise it will go up to probability of uh, 6 it will go up to up to probability of 
a six. Probability of occurrence of six. So what is probability? Uh, the sum of these six probability it is equal to probability of sample of space. That one is equal to one. So call it equation two. So if you talk about equation one and two in together, and if you solve, what you will get? What you will get here? If you solve equation one and two from here. from 1 and 2 what you will get so if you substitute uh, 1 in 2 uh, what you will get it will be probability of uh, 1 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 1 plus probability of 1 how many times 6 times so 6 times probability of 1 equal to Six times probability of one equal to one. Okay, so it will imply probability of one. Probability of occurrence of one is what? It is equal to one by six. And probability of two is also equal to probability of one. And probability of three is also equal to probability of one. So all these outcomes are having the same probability. What is that probability? It is one by six. So here you have computed probability of occurrence of one or two or three uh, via uh, this basic concept of probability, uh, uh, prob probability mo modeling. It is not like that you have computed it through formula. You have computed it through uh, what we call it uh, that basic pro uh, concept of probability modeling. You have come up with like that. So it is later you can say that it is the number of element uh, uh, in, out, uh, in an event divided by number of outcome when sample of space is finite it is a finite kind of thing so just uh, uh, once it went somewhere so if i say that z z is what how will denote it in the term of sequence uh, how will uh, get a sequential representation of integers how will get so if you Talk in number line, it is coming as uh, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it will go like that. So we are interested to find an. What is an? An is very simple to get it like this way. Uh, you can say that an that means f of n. So n is a natural number. So you can get uh, this notation here. If n is a even number divided by 2 even natural number then divided by 2 when n is even and if it is odd then subtract it uh, uh, subtract from it uh, 1 and divide by 2 and take it negative of this whole when n is odd. So under this map <coughs> what you will see that you will get a sequential uh, notation of integers. What is that sequential? So integers uh, uh, yes this one is set of natural number so what under this map an or sequential notation of z we can call it you can say that what is one one is odd number so what we what we have to uh, we 
subtract from 1, we will subtract 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0, divide by 0 and take negative of 0, it would be 0 itself. So, 1 is mapped to 0, 2 is what? 2 is an even number. So, divide it by 2, it will map to 1. So, even number, even number map to positive integers, odd number 3 map to negative integers. So, if take 3 and 1 will map to 0, if you take 3, what would be 3 minus 1, 2, 2 divided by 2, 1 and take negative. So, 3 will map to minus 1. Likewise, uh, if you talk about 5, 4 will map to 4 divided by 2, 4 will map to 2. So, it is a bijection, you can see it directly. And 5 will map to 5 minus uh, 1 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2 and take negative. So, 5 will map to minus 2. 5 will map to minus 2. Likewise, you can extend it. So, a n is taking the form of like this way. So, again we get integer, uh, the sequential representation of uh, integer. So, integer is again a sequence. Integer you can say that you can write in a single sequence form. So, all these are at least a sequential notation, but if I talk about Q, Q can we write in the form of sequence? Anyone? Yes or no? Can we write in the form of sequence? In a single sequence, Q means a set of uh, rationals. Srirang, anyone? Anyone is having any answer over this? Rational number they are, telling, they are telling they can't write. They can't write. Okay. Uh, very nice. Uh, definitely, it would be difficult to write it, but uh, uh, actually, uh, it is a uh, set which can be written in term of a sequential form. So, all you have to uh, uh, what uh, you have to construct a sequence in a very systematic way. So, there is a systematic approach to construct it like that. P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to 0. Q should not be equal to 0. So, this formula might be common. Uh, everyone might be aware of this uh, formula of rational. Okay. Now, if I am asking to write in the uh, in the sequential form, so there is a Dedekind's approach, we can call it like that. So, before going to talk about, uh, so rational rational is actually set of rational number if you try to see in that pattern p by q p by q is simply you are talking about two integer in order pair so p comma q you can simply say that p comma q so p is also coming from integers and q is also coming from integer so you can say that loosely q is actually uh, z cross z you can say that z cross z and z we have taken uh, written in term of a sequence uh, and this one is also in term of sequence. So, order pair of sequence is again a sequence. Are you uh, are you able to listen to me? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, actually rational uh, take it like call it zn. So, here zn it is order pair of two sequence. So, you can say that uh, one is P n kind of things, another one is <coughs> Q n order pair. So, it is sequence kind of things. There are another way of writing all these. So, before uh, establishing z cross z is uh, what uh, you can it can be written in term of sequence. Before that, you can write n cross n is also a uh, it can be written in term of sequence n cross n set of. Uh, positive integers or natural number you can call it so how it will come so it is what one kind of things make order pair like this we write it oh, take one as a first entry and make a representation of all the first row it will talk about the first entry is one at second uh, second entry it will vary so uh, there would be a row with infinite length it will go like that infinite length contour approach we call it like that infinite length okay then come to second row that would uh, here the first entry would be one and the second entry will vary 
वन टू इन्फिनिटी ओके सो ऑल दीज आर मेम्बर ऑफ एन क्रॉस एन यू कैन से इट लाइक दिस वे एंड टू कोमा टू एंड इट विल गो लाइक दैट द सेकेंड रो इज ऑल्सो इनफाइनाइट लेंथ हैविंग इनफाइनाइट लेंथ इट इट विल गो लाइक दैट दैट मीन्स रो एंड कॉलम बोथ विल हैव लेंथ हाउ मेनी इनफाइनाइट लेंथ सो इट इज कमिंग लाइक दिस वे सो इट विल गो लाइक दिस वे एंड यू डिफाइन अ मैप लाइक वेट वाइज सो वट इज सम ऑफ द इंट्रीज यर टू एंड देन यू विज मैप दी ऑर्डर पेयर टू सेम नंबर विच आर हैविंग द सेम वेट the weight here sum of entries is 2 so 1 1 1,1 is mapped to 2 and uh, here 2,1 and 1,2 both are having sum 3 so so 2,1 will map to 3 and 1,2 will also map to 3 like this row you are going uh, this path you are opting here and the here in the first row the third entry would be uh, actually 1, Three. One comma three. You talked about here. What is time? Whether it is attendance time? Ha uh ha. -huh, yes. Okay. Then uh, others we will discuss in next class. Yes. 